But uh, we are joined today by somebody who has skyrocketed to quite a lot of fame in a short period of time in the WWE. A man who is not who is known not only for his wrestling moves but also for his comedic talent. None other than Santino Morella. Mr. Morella, welcome to the main event. How you doing, sir? Oh, very, very good. It's a pleasure to be on the main event. Great to have you on. So, uh, Santino, maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into the business, uh, transitioning from mixed martial arts and judo to professional wrestling. I believe you even attended Concordia University here in Montreal and were part of their amateur wrestling team, correct? Absolutely. I uh, did judo for 20, 25 years. And then to try to break into the business, I tried to go to Japan. And they always told me, if you do good there, they're going to bring you here. So when I went there, I actually was starting to do good there, but I got kicked out because I uh, overstayed one visa by a couple of days, you know. So I back and I went to OVW, and uh, everything seemed to work out just right. Well, Santino, this is The Viz, and uh, speaking of OVW, you're involved in uh, an incredibly famous incident now with uh, Jim Cornette and the Boogeyman, which resulted in Cornette actually slapping you and his eventual dismissal from OVW. Tell us a bit about how all that went down. Oh, this, <laughs> this is a good one. So, <clears throat> I'm this time only at OVW for one month, and uh, my daughter was visiting me, so we're sitting in the audience, and uh, I thought maybe the boogeyman recognized me from the school. And uh, so as he's leaving the ring, he turns to us. And I think, oh, good guy. He's going to scare my daughter for me. You know, that's like a, like a, like a present. But I didn't realize that we were standing in front of the emergency exit where he goes out. So I'm smiling, thinking my daughter is going to... Uh, crap her pants, you know, and then uh, Jim Cornette freaks out and says, move, 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 this man, you have to be scared from this man, and then uh, we moved, and I thought it was over, but somebody called me in the back, and he uh, freaked out a little bit, slap here, slap there, and I think to myself, I can't punch this guy in the face, because I'm a Canadian, <laughs> and I'm going to be kicked out of America, <laughs> so anyway, I just kept uh, quiet, and uh, the rest of the history, again, he could, the WWE called me and they apologized, saying, this is not how we treat our talent, this is not what, the, you know, how we want to develop, you know, inspired young athletes, and uh, he was going to be fired anyway, they told me, because he's crazy, but um, that was uh, definitely, he put me on the radar a little bit, but uh, there was no freebies from that. I had to work, um, you know, from scratch, just like everyone else. Uh, after uh, Jim Cornette's uh, dismissal from OVW, Paul Heyman uh, definitely became a big uh, contributor to the direction of uh, that company and uh, of its trainees. Now, uh, from what has been said, he uh, worked a lot with you. Uh, your thoughts on uh, Paul Heyman and how much he did for you? Well, Paul Heyman did something that I didn't realize. <clears throat> he would actually go up in the bleachers and watch us practice. I was in the intermediate class with Rip Rogers. And uh, he would watch, and he would watch and scope out new talent. He was, uh, he's a special person, the Paul Heyman, you know. Some people can call him whatever they want from the past, but he's a good guy to me. So one day in the parking lot, he said, uh, back then it was a Boris, you know, and he said, uh, you're going, I want you to start on the television next week. And when you're trying to make it in the business, you, you know, this is uh, crazy news, you know, my knees are shaking, I'm thinking, no problem, I'm ready, and uh, next week, sure enough, his, uh, his word was through, I debuted on OVW TV. Yeah, you practically went from one day being in developmental to the next day debuting on WWE Television in Italy and winning the Intercontinental Championship from Umaga, of all people. What was your initial reaction uh, when they told you of their plans for you? Well, actually, they didn't really tell me the plans until like an hour before, because I'm driving in Kentucky to a house show for OVW. The phone rings. This is like Saturday, yeah, or maybe or maybe Friday. No, no, no. It was uh, Friday, yes. And they uh, say, uh, Santino, you're Italian, right? I say, oh, of course, I'm Italian. <laughs> so they uh, say, okay, we're going to send you your passport. You might fly out tomorrow to Milan and debut as Santino Marella. And uh, so I'm looking at the guy, but so I hang up the phone, look at the guy beside me. I'm thinking, oh my God, what's, ha what's happening, you know? 
this can you know and they call me back turn down the volume and <clears throat> professional voice you know hello and then they say yep okay you're booked tomorrow you're flying to Milan you're, you you might you might debut Monday but you know the rest of the business might to, to change last second so uh, fingers crossed I show up walking around don't know really what's going on and Arn Anderson double A come up to me and say hey looks like you're going to have a pretty nice day you're winning intercontinental title and uh you know, I, I actually froze for the first time, froze, like, wow. you walk by me, I kept looking in the same direction, I, I froze. <laughs> but, and sure enough, it happened. Now, if there was uh, anything that uh, you could change in that first month, uh, like, uh, did you think it was too much too fast, or uh, would you have done it all the same thing? I wouldn't change a thing because uh, it's, all a, it's all a means to get where we are today. And if I change something back then, you saw Back to the Future. If you go change something in the past, you're going to affect the future. That's right. Uh, no need to jump back in the DeLorean. Um, <laughs> in uh, in OVW, you had the shoot fight persona when you were Boris Alexeyev, as you mentioned, uh, which really highlighted your in-ring ability. In WWE, they utilize more of your comedic strengths. Are you hoping there'll be a time when you can combine your comedic talents and your in-ring talents into the same character? Yeah, I hope so. We just see sometimes <clears throat> you can want something to be a certain way, but if it doesn't make a sense, you can't force it. So if we get there naturally, organically, and and this comes out, and we have a good storyline that that will you know allow it to make sense, you know, then okay. But I just can't one day wake up and uh, kick everyone's butt, you know. <laughs> Uh, for a while, you played the jealous boyfriend of Maria Kanellis. Uh, how was it like working with her? Ah, uh, you know, to quote the song called Steve Austin, one time when they asked him about the Trish Stratus, his response was, you know, she's a chick. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you were you were actually ripping on Stone Cold's movie The Condemned on TV pretty intensely. Um, how did you really feel about the movie, and did you like working with Stone Cold and getting uh, hit up with the beer hose? <laughs> Well, the movie is the movie. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I, I know. But working with Stone Cold Steve Austin, that was uh, definitely a moment where I stopped and looked around and said to myself, Shana Magan, during the ring with the Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know? For sure, for sure. One of the biggest things. It was, uh, it's, you know, under normal circumstances, that's embarrassing, but it was very fun.